Hi, I'm Richard Rossi and I'm going to teach you uh, the million dollar secret, the holy grail of how to play lead guitar to any song. And I'm going to teach you the pentatonic scale. And I'm smiling because I'm remembering um, a famous uh, comedian that was one of my guitar students in, uh, in Hollywood, California. He told me it was like a million dollars when I taught him this pentatonic scale. He said, I'm middle aged. He said, I don't feel cool anymore. And uh, all the uh, young people were calling me sir and looking at me like I'm old. He said, but the minute I learned this pentatonic scale, he said, I just can play to any song and um, everyone thinks I'm cool again. And he, was, he, he had me laughing because this changed his life. He said he was looking for that one thing of how could I play lead to any song I hear on the radio. This is a, a tremendous secret I'm going to show you. It's not really a secret, but for me it feels like a great secret. Because once you understand this scale and uh, you can play to any song. You can, you can improvise melody to any song. And um, I was forced to learn this and apply it uh, when I was about uh, maybe 14 or so. Uh, my father was a, uh, a very uh, great guitarist, professional guitarist, and he got sick and had all these, all these guitar gigs that I had to fill in for. And I had, the pretty, I had to figure out how do I take something simple and be able to play lead to just about any piece of music, even if I've never heard it before. So that's what we're going to learn today. Um, there's se about five different pentatonic scales, but for many years I just knew the first one and I was able to apply it to any song, so I'll show you how to do that. And I'd recommend you learn the first one. You can always build and learn the other ones that connect to it, but the first one is the one that most people know. Now, um, starting on, say, the first fret, the scale, now unlike a chord, you don't have to keep your fingers down, but it's 1-4, so if we're starting on the lowest string and we're starting in the first position at the first fret, 1 means my first finger is there on the first fret, 1-4 means the second note is on the fourth fret with my fourth finger, so like that. Now the next three strings are 1-3, in other words I'm going first fret, third fret, first fret, third fret, first fret, third fret. Then the last two are one four one four one four, and then we can go backwards four one four one three one three one three one four one. Now the first thing that you should do is memorize this, where you don't have to think about it, where you can just play this scale like this. And you see, I don't really think about it too much. I've been doing it so long, and I want you to get to that point. It won't take you long, literally, if you just even take even an hour right now and start running this scale, before long you'll be able to do it without having to check. Now we'll have the drill for this on amysflashcards.com, but um, you want to get to the point where you're not thinking about it, you're just able to run it like that. Now how does it work? Well, the way you can play to any song, the only thing that's going to change is where on the guitar you play it. You know, so uh, some, some songs might be in the key of G. <laughs> So I'm going to be here. If it's in the key of A, I'm here. The only thing that's changing is where do I play that scale. Um, now, how do I know where to uh, be for that? Well, with most stuff that's like fast music, rock and roll, blues, has a good beat to it, most of it, the root note is where my first finger is, is, is the root note, the key. So. If you go up your neck, and it's already on amysflashcards.com, the notes going up the neck, the, uh, for instance, remember when we learned to read, if you did the reading session with me, you know that this is E open and this is F, this is G, so that's the root note. In other words, if I'm playing blues in the key of F, because my first finger would be an F here, I'm going to play the pentatonic scale there. So let's say... Let's see, there's a rhythm guy and he's playing the key of F. I can play my pattern, one pentatonic here. So I'm in the key of F, see? Now if I'm in the key of G, uh, G is here at the third fret, so I'm just sliding my pentatonic up to here. Um, now, you may have noticed I wasn't playing the notes in the pentatonic scale in the exact order I taught it to you, and that's an important thing. 
And this is where the kind of right brain side of things comes in. There's the left brain side of learning the drills. But the, the, they say uh, there's a woman at Cal State Long Beach, where I, uh, near where I live, did a study on the right side of the brain. And I'm not a uh, neurologist or scientist. I don't know if it's true. But she says that the right brain is kind of more intuitive, more improvisational, more creative. And that's where it comes in for you to feel the notes. In other words, when you play lead, any of these notes will work in the scale. So you don't have to run them in this order. And the way to play lead is you get to pick and there, you know, which of those notes you play when. Uh, so let's say I'm in the key of F. I can even put spaces in there. In fact, uh, it's sometimes the space in the notes give it a certain flavor. And it's uh, you know, great guitarist Eric Clapton said, it's the notes I don't play just as much as the notes I play that, are, that is important. Um, uh, for instance, B.B. King, a uh, great blues guitarist, will put a lot of space in his lead. So let's say we're in the key of F. Sometimes a novice guitarist, particularly uh, in like the, the heavy metal uh, genre, there was a period of speed metal in the 80s, a lot of the heavy metal guitars, they, they had this kind of testosterone contest of who could be the fastest and who could play the most notes. And so a lot of them were just, you know, just constantly running. It was all about speed and how fast and how complex they could go. But the music um, sometimes didn't have that same movement, uh, ability to touch people as the person that would just even play less notes but with more expression. So um, some of the uh, guitarists and, and started to say, you know, maybe we should put some space in this again. Like, for instance, a blues guitarist like B.B. King might go something like, and he's letting the background guys play for a while and he might he might wait for a second to come back with that pentatonic scale he might come in a little bit later so now you have root notes in this scale and the root notes are the key you're in I mentioned this is a root note this is F this is also a root note because this is your E string, your high E string, and your lowest string is your low E string. So just like this is E, F, G, the lowest string is E, F, G. So this is a root note, and we can put up the scale and even put an R on this note, this note, and this note, that's a root note. So whenever you hit the root note in the scale, it feels resolved. For instance, watch. See how you hit the root note, root note there? just feels like, hmm. you don't always have to end a, a, a lick on the root note, but when you want to feel like you're in the pocket and it sounds really great, end on the root note. There's the root note, there's another root. That's it. So, when the key changes, you change with it. In other words, you slide the scale up to play lead based on what key is that song in. So, let's say like Chuck Berry, one of the kind of originators of the rock and roll sound, had uh, Johnny Be Good. So he's in the key of G. He's playing in G chord. Did that in Louisiana, close to New Orleans. Back up in a rhythm on the Evergreens. He's in the key of G, so I'm going to be pentatonic and up here. Now, there's a lot of tricks you can do to embellish this scale, like Chuck Berry did the double note trick. Because you know how we have 4 1 4 1? Well, we have both those notes are on the pentatonic scale. So he would do a lot of double notes. Something like that. Um, so that's it. Basically, in a rock and roll or blues song, find out the key you're in. Find that note on your fir first or sixth string. So let your first finger fall there and do this scale. You can improvise lead. And you can do different things to, to enhance the feeling of your lead, like bending is when you bend the notes. You, you know, there's um, sometimes a, a vibrato where you kind of see how my finger's kind of moving. There's little tricks putting space in the leads, feeling to the lead. That's how you play lead. Now, if you're playing a pretty song, now here's the trick that throws some people off. Uh, a, a melodic song or a pretty song is not going to work exactly the same. In a rock and roll song, your first finger in this scale will, will be the, where the key's at. But if you're playing something pretty or melodic, your pinky should be what key you're in. I'll give you an example of that. 
if I was, say, in a rock and roll blues song in the key of C, this is C going up the neck. If you do, you can do the drill there at the site here at amysflashcards.com. Do the drill where you learn the notes up the neck and you know at the eighth fret, that's C. So if I'm going to say a blues song in C. Well, your mama don't dance, your daddy don't rock and roll. I'm in C, blues song. So my pentatonic's going to be there, right? There's your skill we learned. Well, your mama don't dance, your daddy don't rock and roll. Pentatonic scalp. Now, let's say I'm in a pretty song in the key of C. A melodic song. That's more of a pretty song. Doesn't quite sound right. So, but my pinky will now fall on the C. So when I'm in a pretty song, I just, I'm, I'm just moving my pentatonic back here to the fifth fret so that my pinky falls on the C. That's him in a pretty song. Um, and the big question, the million dollar question you'll have when you're first starting to apply this is, well, how do I know what key I'm in? And, um, you know, sometimes it's asking the people you're playing with what, what, what key it's in is a simple way. Um, also, there's key signatures that you'll learn about um, that will tell you. But a pretty simple way that is pretty foolproof about 99% of the time is the usually the chord the song starts on or ends on or whenever the melody kind of resolves it'll usually go back to the chord of what key you're in and that can tell you where to slide up and down your neck now if you want to develop your ear a really fun exercise you can do is just put on music that you like and enjoy and and just have some fun and 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 don't like put yourself under too much pressure you know and lower your expectation and just when you have some time just to turn on music and then just try to find on your neck uh, sliding up and down where the pentatonic scale sounds right and believe it or not you'll start to find it you'll start to start to find it and sometimes literally the first thing I'll do when I'm listening to music is when I hear it resolve or go to the end of a verse or kind of go back and it's it's kind of in the pocket where it's going back to that root note sometimes I'll be fishing like this and just finding uh, you know where where what note is that oh Oh, C, it's in the key of C, you know? So, and it's kind of a rock and roll type song. Okay, let me move up to the eighth fret then with my pentatonic scale, see? Or if it's a pretty song, my, let my pinky be there. And, and I'll, so that'll, I'll be my pentatonic here. But sometimes it's just a, literally a matter of sliding up and down the neck on your guitar and finding where the pentatonic scale sounds good. So, first things first. Uh, first things first is learn the scale. Run this thing run this thing, run this thing, run this thing. I have a brother that plays blues guitar and uh, he used to uh, almost drive everyone crazy sometimes because when he was learning these scales he would sit there with his guitar. We'd be watching TV, whatever we'd be doing, he'd be just sitting there like this, you know, learning his scales, just running his scales until he, it, it was second nature. And then, um, you know, start trying to play it to songs you like. Um, one thing that it's fun that I do when I teach the class at the school is oh, everyone bring in their favorite record, uh, you know, a song that they like, and they'll bring it in on a CD or sometimes an MP3 or a, their iPod or uh, whatever device they have. And we'll go around the class and each person will play their favorite song. And we'll have fun figuring out, okay, where do we go to play lead to that song? And each person gets to kind of play lead to the song they like. And it's always, of course, a d different diverse group of songs depending on who's in the class. There's a lot of different musical tastes. So, um, just wrapping up then, learn the scale, 
and learn the notes going up the neck you know E F G A B C D E all those notes so that when you when you know the key you're able to kind of quickly adjust to where you can be with your pentatonic scale and then have fun making up your leads you can make you can scramble these notes in any order it's up to you you can feel it uh, I don't really plan out my leads a lot of the times I just know the pentatonic scale work and so once I know what key I'm in I just kind of feel it and improvise it in the moment so uh, work with the drills at amysflashcards.com and uh, have some fun and like my famous comedian friend you'll find this pentatonic scale change your life and you could because you're going to be able now to play lead to any song in existence with this pentatonic scale god bless you and happy guitar playing